Welcome to another video of the Willow Creek Railroad. In this video, we're going to talk about the signaling system used on the layout, with an emphasis on using an Arduino to control the Highland Loop block. For those of you fearful of a boring technical discussion, rest assured that this video does not describe how to install or program an Arduino, though I'll tell you where you can find that information if you're interested. Rather, this video provides an example where an Arduino was used to solve a model railroading problem. The Willow Creek track plan includes four sections of single track positioned between sections of double track or sections with passing sidings. To avoid trains running into each other, each section of single track is protected by an automated block signaling system. Three of the single track sections are typical blocks with an entry exit point on each end of the block. Tomar two aspect block signals protect each end of the block and are controlled by a Circuitron BD1 block occupancy detector. The BD1 uses a pair of optical sensors at each end of the block to detect a train entering or exiting the block and sets the block signals to either red or green as appropriate. The fourth block, known as Highland Loop Block, presents a special challenge in that there are three entry exit points. While Circuitron has controllers that can handle this situation, the signaling is complicated in that one of these points is the entrance to Waverly Yard and requires additional signaling to control trains entering and exiting the yard. Here's a track diagram of Highland Loop Block with entry exit points at Sarlat Viaduct, Waverly Junction, and Highland. If a train is heading for Waverly Yard, it must wait at Sarlat Viaduct until the yardmaster gives the signal to proceed. The original signaling plan included a confusing array of seven signals. One block signal at each of the three entry exit points, tall dwarf signals at each entry exit point, indicating alignment of the turnout at Waverly Junction, whether aligned to the main line or to the yard, and an additional dwarf signal at Sarlat Viaduct, telling an operator waiting to enter the yard if they had permission to proceed. The two sets of signals at Waverly Junction and Highland were confusing enough, but the three signals at Sarlat Viaduct were absolutely maddening. The block signal reported whether the block was occupied, but operators also had to interpret the two dwarf signals as shown on this matrix. With two dwarf signals and multiple routes through the block, there were eight combinations of signals that the operator had to understand. Plus, they also had to pay attention to the block signal. Given that operators tend not to read directions, the shredder is the only good place for this confusing matrix. What's needed is an intelligent system to control the signals for Highland Loop. That's where the Arduino comes in. So what is an Arduino? It's an integrated circuit board that contains a microprocessor, which can be programmed to perform arithmetic and logic operations, plus a set of pins to easily connect analog and digital inputs and outputs. The Arduino is programmed using an online development environment that's available at no cost. Basically, you give the Arduino a set of inputs and tell it what outputs it should provide based on your instructions. On the Willow Creek, the Arduino is continually looping, checking to see what's happening in Highland Loop Block and setting signals accordingly to control the trains. And this loop is very fast, so there's no delay in setting the signals. You saw the mess of signals we had before, seven signals in total. Now let's look at the signals after the Arduino is installed. We still need to have a block signal at each of the entry exit points. But now we only need one additional signal at Sarlat Viaduct, telling an operator waiting to enter the yard if they have permission to proceed. The Arduino enables us to control the block using only four signals. Remember that the Arduino has to check the status of Highland Loop block to determine how to set the signals. So what is the Arduino looking at? The Arduino is checking three things. First, is the block occupied by a train or is the block clear? Second, is the turnout at Waverly Junction aligned to the main or to Waverly Yard? And finally, has the Yardmaster granted permission for a train to enter the yard? 
Permission to depart the yard is communicated to operators verbally once the Arduino has set the signals based on all three inputs. With the information from these three inputs, the Arduino must set signals for four possible routes through the block. A train can travel on the main line from Sarlat Viaduct to Highland, and a train can travel the opposite direction on the main line. Unless the dispatcher orders otherwise, the conditions for these two routes are the same. The block is clear, and the turnout at Waverly Junction is aligned to the main. A train can enter Waverly Yard from Sarlat Viaduct, and a train can depart from Waverly Yard. But we also have one more situation that the Arduino must handle. If the block is occupied, the Arduino must not allow any other trains to enter the block from any direction. After we've programmed the Arduino to check the status of Highland Loop block and set the signals accordingly, here's the results. If trains are planning to run on the main line and the block is clear, then we have green block signals at Sarlat Viaduct and Highland and a red block signal in the yard approaching the junction. As seen here at Highland, the block signal is displaying green, so the train enters the block. When the Arduino senses that the block is occupied, it sets all signals to red. If the block is occupied with a train, then all block signals and the Tall Dwarf Yard Permission signal at Sarlat Viaduct show red so that no additional trains can enter the block. In this clip, we see that the block is occupied by the approaching steam train, hence all signals are displaying red. Once the Arduino senses that the block is clear, the block signal is set to green and the waiting train is free to enter the block. If a train is sitting at Sarlat Viaduct waiting to enter the yard, the tall dwarf signal will show yellow once the yard master has given permission to enter the yard and the Arduino has verified the route. Here we see a train waiting to enter Waverly Yard. When the yard master aligns the turnout at Waverly Junction to the yard, the Arduino senses the change and sets the block signal to red so that no trains enter the block from the main. Once the yard master flips the yard permission toggle switch, the Arduino sets the Tall Dwarf Yard signal to yellow, and the train has permission to proceed. Note how the Yard Master uses the signals provided by the Arduino. Once the train has left Sarlat Viaduct heading for the yard, the Arduino signals that the train has entered the block. At this point, the Yard Master turns off the Yard Permission signal, so that any following train headed for the yard will stop at the Sarlat Viaduct signal. And once the train reaches yard limits and exits the block, the yard master aligns the Waverly Junction turnout back to the main. Finally, if a train is ready to depart the yard, the block signal in the yard throat will show green once the yard master has aligned the junction turnout for the yard. Since the yard master did not flip the permission toggle switch on his control panel, the Arduino assumes that the Yard Master has a train departing the yard. In this video clip, we again see the doodle bug preparing to depart the yard. Once the Yard Master has aligned the junction turnout to the yard, the Arduino sets the block signal in the yard to display green, and the doodle bug is cleared to depart and enter the block. The block signal is located away from the block entrance, so it's easier to see in the yard throat. But once the doodle bug enters the block, the Arduino sets the block signal to red. With the intelligent capabilities of the Arduino, I've programmed a couple of additional features for the block. When a train waiting at Sarlat Viaduct has been given permission to enter the yard, but hasn't yet moved into the block, the block signal in the yard flashes red. This tells the yard master that everything is set for the train to enter the yard, but that the train hasn't departed Sarlat Viaduct yet. Once the train enters the block, the Arduino will set all signals to red. Before the Yard Master changes alignment of the turnout at Waverly Junction, it's important that he knows there are no trains in the block. As you've already seen, a red LED has been installed on the Yard Master's control panel that flashes whenever the block is occupied. 
The yard master will wait until the LED stops flashing, indicating that the block is clear before he changes alignment of the junction turnout. So now you've seen how the Arduino is used to control the signals of Highland Loop Block. The capabilities of the Arduino to evaluate the status of the block and change the signals accordingly has greatly simplified the block signaling system and makes it much more enjoyable for operators. The Uno is the most common version of the Arduino. You can purchase an original Arduino Uno via the internet for around $24, or you can purchase a good quality clone for about half that price. There are also lots of add-on units, known as shields, that you can purchase for the Arduino. These simplify use of the Arduino by providing extra features, such as screw terminals for attaching wires, enabling control of an external motor, providing relays for operating higher voltage components, and many other capabilities. And there are lots of resources available on the internet. On my website, you're welcome to access my multi-part article that describes use of the Arduino at Highland Loop Block, including a copy of the program used in the Arduino. And if you query Arduino in your browser, you'll find a ton of information that you can use to get started with this fascinating and very powerful tool. And if there's something you'd like to do with your Arduino but aren't sure how to do it, such as how do you make an LED blink, try querying the internet as I did many times. Chances are you'll find one or more solutions to your problem. I hope you've enjoyed this video showing the signaling system on the Willow Creek Railroad and how an Arduino was applied to address a signaling problem with the Highland Loop block. And as always, thank you for visiting the Willow Creek.